Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Michelle Perre. I am a fourth grade math and science teacher in Maryland. And for those of you that have been around a while, you know what time it is. It is math bakery time. The math bakery is a mini classroom transformation that I do every year to allow my students to apply their math skills. We have been working on multiplying whole numbers and fractions for about the past week. My students have learned tons of different strategies that they can use to solve these types of problems. So today I'm going to transform my classroom into a bakery to give my students a real life situation to apply these skills. For those of you that did watch my math bakery vlog last year, don't worry, you're not gonna be bored, I promise. My math bakery has received a facelift, if you will. I have altered the recipe. Get it, bakery. <laughs> In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the materials that you need, how to set it up, and the instructional component so that you can complete the same transformation in your classroom. Let's jump right into this and start talking about materials. First and foremost, I just wanna put this out there, all of the materials I'm about to show you are not necessary. Classroom transformations ultimately are about the content and they're about the situation that you create to allow your students to practice the skill. They are not about all the props and the little fancy things. That's just not the point. However, those things can make it more engaging for students. And if that is something that you enjoy, please, by all means, go ahead and decorate your classroom. But if you're looking at that and you're like, ooh, Michelle, that's just a little too extra for me, it's fine. Don't use those parts, just focus on the instructional component. Let's start by talking about my outfit. Now for my outfit, I do keep it pretty simple. All I'm wearing is an apron that I brought from home and this little toy chef's hat that I got from Dollar Tree for literally $1. Now I personally love dressing up for transformations. It's one of the things that just gives me so much happiness as a teacher, but if it's not your thing, totally don't have to dress up. I also give my students the option to dress up. Obviously, I'm not gonna force them to put this on. If they don't want to, they don't have to, but I will say, I've never had a student refuse because they like to dress up too. So for the bakery, I actually got these little mini aprons off of Amazon. I believe they were a 24 pack for like somewhere between 10 and $15, very affordable. These can be used year after year. These are the same aprons that I used last year. And to go with it, I stepped it up a little bit this year. They also have a little chef hat. Now in order to create these, all I used is a set of border, which I got from Dollar Tree. And this is actually like sprinkle border. So it worked out really well and a piece of of tissue paper. I did recruit Billy's help for this because I decided to change all of this math bakery stuff last night and it was a horrible decision. So Billy did help with these. We actually followed, and by we, I mean him, followed a tutorial on YouTube. So I will link that video in the description box. Originally, I had this dream that I was gonna create 30 of these little suckers. Did not happen. We only created eight. And again, we, why am I saying we? It was Billy because it was more time consuming than we thought. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have a baking leader or head baker, head baker at each group and they are going to be the ones wearing the chef's hat. And so each student will get to wear it once throughout the day and I don't have anyone fighting over it, but I also didn't have to make 30 of them. Next, I'm gonna show you all of the other materials that I use to kind of decorate my classroom, make it more engaging for my students. None of these are necessary, but if you're interested, here they are. First, I have tablecloths. These came from Dollar Tree, so they were $1 each. I have one for each one of my group of desks, and I also have them for my back tables as well. Then I have this set of oven mitts. I like to wear these when I am going around the room. These were also from Dollar Tree, so $1 for the pair of two. I then have some cookie sheets or baking sheets. This top one came from Dollar Tree, so it was $1. This one came from home. Yeah, it's a little bit, you know, loved and used and messy, but I do have two of them because I'm gonna have two rotations of groups going today, and I'll explain that in a minute. I do have these nice little Betty Crocker spatulas. Those came from Dollar Tree as well, so $1 each. I have two things of cupcake trays, also from Dollar Tree, $1 each. Then I have these paper cups. These come in a 16 pack from Dollar Tree for $1. And then I have these cake pans. Again, I do have two of them, also from Dollar Tree, also $1 each. 
Next, let's talk about the setup of Math Bakery. I am very fortunate that I have my planning time first thing in the morning. So my students come into the classroom and then I take them on their merry way to their cultural art. That is when I set up the Math Bakery. I do have an hour of planning time today so that will be more than enough time to set up this classroom transformation. I will say you could set this up in as few as like 20 minutes. It's not super complicated. So here's what I do in order to set it up. This is the completed setup. I have all eight of my groups. I am not using the desk all the way over to the left-hand side of my room. Everyone's apron is laid out. All their materials are laid out. Y'all, I'm so excited for this. This year with the Math Bakery, I decided to do a rotation format, but because I have, you know, over 30 students, I actually split my class into two, and then each one of those two groups is going to complete four rotations. So I technically have eight groups, but they're only completing four different rotations. So I created two copies of every single station. Now to make it that much more engaging for my students, I do have some nice like cafe jazzy kind of music playing in the background. I also put in a vanilla air freshener so it kind of smells bakery-ish hopefully. And for the finale, I got my students mini cupcakes that they will enjoy at the end as they graduate from the math bakery. Now I highly recommend this brand of cupcakes. I get these from Wegmans but you can I'm sure get them other places. They're called school safe cupcakes so they are dairy free peanut free and tree nut free which is perfect if you do have allergies in your classroom now that I have set up the bakery I'm gonna have a lot of different groups of students coming in and out of my room throughout the day so part of me just has to let the perfectionism go things are gonna get messed up it's not the end of the world our schedule is off today for picture day so in the middle of the day we're actually going to be going back to homeroom classes and then going back to blocks it's going to be hectic but it's fine. This classroom transformation is all about creating a memorable learning experience for my students, which brings me to the next part, the instructional component. This is your bread and butter of the classroom transformation. All of the decor, all of the little knickknacks and the outfits, those are all extra. It ultimately comes down to what are your students doing to learn? How are they applying this skill? How are they practicing? So let me show you what I came up with for this year. It is different than how I did it last year. Here is our first station. It is the cookie baker training. So this is the setup on the table. You will see I have a cookie tray with six cookies. There also are spatulas because what they're gonna do is they're gonna take the spatula, they're going to take the cookie, they're going to flip it, hopefully on the cookie tray, and that's going to give them the fraction. So once one side has a whole number, one side has a fraction. On the recording sheet, they're gonna copy down the equation and then they have a spot to show their work for each of the six cookies. So this is kind of your basic computation. Not a lot of actual problem solving, it's really just practicing the different strategies. And I have my baker hat for whoever my head baker is to wear. Next station is the cupcake baker training. For this one, they have different cupcakes that have word problems on them. So they're gonna take turns reading the cupcake and then solving it on their paper. So the recording sheet for this one's pretty basic. They just have six boxes. So for each one of the cupcakes, and they are numbered, they're just going to write an equation, show their work. But I left it pretty open-ended, just like before they have the baker's hat for the head baker. Next is the cake baker training. This one also has word problems, but these ones are focused on multiplicative comparison. So for example, the baker decorates 10 times as many cookies. So these ones are still focused on problem solving, but it does work in the multiplicative comparison. Each different slice of cake has a different word problem and the recording sheet looks very similar to the other one. So they just have a different rectangle to show their work for each one of the six problems. And finally, we have our decorator training. This is probably the most rigorous of all the tasks. For this one, they have three different recipe cards, one for chocolate icing, cream cheese icing, and vanilla icing. They are going to read the recipe card and on the recording sheet, they are going to find out how much of each ingredient they need for two batches, five batches and 10 batches. So this one is a little bit more complex, requires a little bit more problem solving because they have to infer that in order to create multiple batches, they have to then multiply 
Plus this one just has more problems that they're actually working through. So this one is definitely more time consuming. As you saw, each group does have a set of directions. This is just a plastic photo frame that I got from Dollar Tree. This is the seven by nine size and the Math Bakery pack does include these signs. They are editable so you can change out the directions to fit your needs. So I have four rotations up here and then my last four rotations, two of them are here and two of them are back here at the back tables. Even though I am doing it in a rotation format and I'm doing it all in one day you could easily split this up between four different days day one they start with the cookie baker then they move on to be cupcake bakers then they move on to be cake bakers and then finally they move on to be decorators or you could actually use this for differentiation you could divide your students into four different groups your students who are working on just basic computation can do the cookies your students who are ready for the next level with some more problem solving can do the cupcakes and or the cakes and then your students who really need a challenge can do your decorating. So keep in mind the way that I am structuring it is just one way to do it. You can totally adapt this to fit your class and your students needs. Now I showed you each recording sheet individually, which works great if you're going to have four separate groups or if you're going to do the activities on different days. But since my students are completing them all in one day, I actually staple them together as a packet. So each different page is a different station. That way as students move from station to station, all they need is their packet and a pencil. Now, if you want to purchase this math bakery pack, I finally have it available in my TPT store. I know y'all have been waiting for a while. And when I say a while, I literally mean a year. I'm so sorry I didn't get up sooner. But you all know how it is. Teacher life is a very busy life, but it is finally posted and it is better than ever. It includes all of the recording sheets, all of the manipulatives that you're using with the cookies and the cupcakes and the cake and the recipe cards. It also includes a PowerPoint that you can use throughout the day to help guide the lesson. It is editable so you can actually go in you can change the numbers make it work for you if you are interested in that the link is down in the description box I also wanted to share a tip for cleaning up and storing these materials because obviously you want to use them you know year after year I like to use these big tubs you can find these at Walmart Target wherever and I just put all the materials on the inside so I have all the bakers hats on top so they don't get damaged but you can see underneath at the very bottom are all of the aprons and all the materials so when I'm ready to do this again next year. All I have to do is take out the container and I'm ready to go. That is it for my math bakery. I have to say today was a blast. We had so much fun and I, I include me in that because I had fun too. I love taking on the persona of, you know, a baker, which I am not at all. My students were just commenting on how this was the most fun they've had all year and how they love math and how cool it is. And I'm just like, so now I've got to clean it all up, take it over to my team teacher because she is going to use it all to do the same lesson tomorrow. If you all enjoyed this video and it has inspired you to go above and beyond for your students, or it has given you an idea for your own classroom transformation, give the video a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you so much for watching. I love y'all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video and for supporting my YouTube channel. If you want to check out any of my older videos, you can use the two links right down here. If you want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos, you can use the link right up here. The links to all of my social media sites, my Teachers Pay Teacher Store, my Merchandise Store, and my Amazon Store are in the description box, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.